our larger calling as followers of Jesus must be placed as a kind of setting for what we saw ourselves doing. We were specifically identifying ourselves as Mennonites who are part of the followers of Jesus. But I was also deeply identified with the community of black people who were giving leadership to this great thrust to transform the South and to transform the country around issues of democracy and racial justice that we had the privilege then of joining together followers of Jesus, members of the Mennonite community, those who were part of the community of African Americans who were conscious about the need for new society and new life in the South and in the nation. Different people had different responses. Martin's was pretty knowledgeable. He clearly knew something about Anabaptist history, about Mennonite history, and was very welcoming uh, as a result of that. I think he was welcoming not just because we were Mennonites, but because as he understood it, Mennonites had taken the trouble to say, go on our behalf and represent us there in that movement. Martin appreciated that. A lot of our friends in the freedom movement were just fascinated by the fact that we were Mennonites. None of their images of Mennonites had prepared them for us ever. And so we had a lot of good time often talking about how we got to be Mennonites, what was going on, why the Mennonites wanted to be involved. There was also something of the fact that we were coming from the North and had not been wrapped up in all of the emotional tensions and issues that might be present for those whose life had been confined to the South. And so it was our northerness that also was a part of what people like Martin saw as an advantage uh, for us being involved in that kind of role of negotiator, intermediary, that would have to be a part of the story too. As we understood it, the way of resisting evil without being overcome by evil and standing especially standing with those who were being beaten up and overcome, to stand with them and to encourage them to find ways of moving to a better kind of society, of changing the society in which they lived and opening new possibilities for us, all of these were part of nonviolent action. All of these could lead us to what Martin liked to call the beloved community. If America is to become the country that it had the potentials to become, as a truly 
multiracial, compassionate democracy. Then there are three what he called evils which have to be wrestled with. One, racism. And of course, we are still working with and wrestling with that. Second, at times he spoke about it as materialism. At other times he spoke about it as economic exploitation. As the second one, and the third one, militarism. It seems to me that those continue to be issues, tendencies, ways of life that we must continue to struggle with. And I see them as continuing to stand in the way of us becoming our best possible uh, nation. Deep in the heart of that whole uh, presentation was a call away from another duo that is so troublesome for our country, and that is the combination of ignorance about what life in other parts of the world is and arrogance in which we take that ignorance and try to tell others that we have something to show them. And it seems to me that that is still part of the great difficulty that we need to deal with and that we're finding ourselves dealing with around the world and especially now uh, in the Middle East. I suspect that we are going to have to be careful to take that on in areas like Africa, uh, in new ways, in areas like Latin America. I think that the need to really educate ourselves, our children, our people on what the world is like and who's there and how they are like and unlike us and what our calling is in relationship to the rest of the world all of that still needs to be, for me, a continued emphasis in the education that we share uh, in this country.